Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and in this episode of C++ Data Structures, we're going to be talking about comparing different sorting algorithms. So in the past, when we've looked at these different sorting algorithms, we've kind of hand-waved, um, you know, saying that, you know, some algorithms are better than other algorithms, and we gave a couple of reasons, but we never visually showed, you know, you know some proof as to why this is or how this is. So we've got some empirical data over here uh, to prove that for bubble sort, insertion sort, selection sort, quick sort and merge sort that we'll look at in a little bit. Now, if you want to collect your own data inside of uh, the repository on GitHub, right? so you'll see that there's a new directory. So if we go to the base directory, we've got algorithms and data structures. If you go into algorithms, then into plotting, which is new, you'll find uh, it's just for sorting algorithms now. When we do graph algorithms, there'll be another category here to measure the performance for different graph algorithms. Right, so uh, now we've got this new uh, a, a couple new files and a new program here, right? So I've, I went ahead and merged all the sorting algorithms into a single file, this common.h, right? So we've got um, a couple of utility functions. We've got one for collecting uh, time points using a high resolution clock. This is part of the C++11 standard. Uh, initialization array uh, or init array function, a swap function. And then we have our actual algorithms, right? So we've got you know all of these refactored and improved a little bit. Right, so we've got bubble sort, insertion sort, uh, selection sort over here, uh, merge sort, right, the two functions for merge sort that is, and then quick sort and the two functions for quick sort. All right, so we have all of these functions inside of there. And then uh, we also have this perftest.cpp. Now this perftest.cpp can be used to collect data on all of these uh, different algorithms. And the basic way that this program is set up is that uh, so just kind of backing up a little bit rather, uh, whenever we're trying to collect data, especially when we're using, you know, a random function or we're using RAND, we don't want, you know, to stumble upon a very good input case for, you know, our sorting algorithm. You know, it's bound to happen or it's, it probably will happen at some point. Um, however, we don't want that to influence our overall analysis of, you know, a sorting algorithm. So how do we, you know, prevent, you know, a good case or a bad case from making our sorting algorithm look better or worse than it is in reality? Well, we'll average it over, you know, some number of runs, right? So this in variable right here controls the number of runs, right? So right now I have it set to 100 just to test out the functionality. You might want to run it for something more like 10,000. Um, then we've got uh, an input size, right? So this is how big your array is. So we've got a lower bound and an upper bound. So you probably don't need to care about sorting a single element or two elements or three elements. So you can probably start somewhere more along the lines of sorting 10 elements and then work your way up to something like a thousand elements, right? This should give you a pretty good picture, right? So what does this uh, program actually do, right? So we've got this uh, double time. This is where we're going to add up the time that each run takes and then we'll store the average, right? So we'll divide time by the number of runs, which will be n. Right, and this will give us an average time uh, per run, right? And we'll store that in this vector, right? And so here's our doubly nested for loop. So for every input size, right, that's this outer for loop, and on the inner for loop, for every input size, we'll go ahead and run this array size within different inputs, right? So, uh, you know, in this case, we're running it with a hundred different inputs. Okay, so then we uh, initialize the array every single time. We collect the start point, and then right after it. Uh, we call whatever you know, sorting algorithm we want. So whether it's insertion sort, uh, you know, if you wanted a different one, you can just comment this out and recompile it with, you know, selection sort. At some point, I may add this to be. Uh, at some point, I may change this to instead be um, something that you can just select with a command line um, flag. Uh, but for now, you know, if you want to collect uh, the data, all you need to do is uncomment one of these. Um, Make sure you don't uncommon more than one, or you'll be profiling, uh, you know, two sorting algorithms running back to back, which probably isn't a great idea, um, especially because you're sorting something that you just sorted, right? And then after we call insertion sort or something, then we'll go ahead and collect uh, the end time, or the time right after that function returns, and then we'll go ahead and you know calculate how long. Uh, how long of a time there is between this get time call and the end get time call. And we'll add that to this time that we end up averaging out uh, down here and saving to that vector called times. 
Then at the very end of execution, it will uh, go ahead and uh, output all of this data. So in this case, it'll output um, 990 different points, right? So one for each input size between 10 and 1000, and it'll write it to a data file called timing.dat, right? So if we go ahead and uh, I have the, I have a couple of these already saved for the ones that I already ran in this data directory, right? So you can see it's a merge sort.dat, right? So this is a time in seconds it took, you know, to run for the different input sizes between 10 and 1000, right? So to, uh, right, so if you actually want to visualize this, we can look over here, right? So I've got this plotted up, right? So these are the five files that are in that data directory. I just threw this into Google Sheets real quick and generated a quick plot. So as you can see, bubble sort is clearly the worst over here, right? And there's a main reason why bubble sort is probably the worst, and it's mainly because of all the different, um, all the swaps that it has to do. Um, along the way, while well, something like you know selection sort, which still isn't um, you know a great sorting algorithm, it has a couple you know key comparison or key advantages, which is it's not constantly swapping things to move them up. All that it's doing is keeping track of an index of the smallest element while it's searching, or sorting rather. Uh, then we've got insertion sort. So insertion sort does a little bit better. Uh, still, and the reason why it does a little bit better. Well, because, uh, or the main the main reason why it will do a little bit better is because you know when it's you know going back through um, that sorted you know subarray that it's generating right as it moves along, right it doesn't have to necessarily go through every single element unlike uh, insertion sort or rather unlike selection sort that has to go through that entire uh, remaining subarray every single time so it can do a little bit better than selection sort. Um, then we have uh, our two much better sorting algorithms, which are quick sort and merge sort. And so we see quick sort here in orange and then green sort below that a little bit better. Now, uh, quick sort can be better uh, than merge sort and it is in, as shown out in this case. Uh, and this is mainly because, uh, so uh, the way that we implemented quick sort, we're doing all the sorting in place. Quick uh, merge sort is going to be a little bit worse and this is mainly because uh, we're making sure that or we're having to copy out, um, or we're making duplicate copies of the two subarrays that we're end up merging together. So we have some extra overhead there that will make uh, the way we input a quick sort, which is just going to be, uh, uh, which is just going to be with um, in an in place sorting algorithm, right? It'll it makes it have a little bit of an advantage there, right? But this is a basic comparison of these five sorting algorithms. So feel free to, you know, I'll go ahead and link this down below if you want to. You know, take a look at this, and of course that data is on the reposit, uh, GitHub repository. So feel free to check that out, github.com slash coffee before arch, right? So, um, right, so we've got all the different repositories here for all the different uh, series that I do, all right? So uh, we looked at, oh, I don't have another front page anymore. So let's go back to repositories real quick. So we looked at C++ data structures. And again, this is going to be found under uh, algorithms and plotting sorting algorithms right and then we've got the data in here in these directories Oops. then we also have of course uh, you know all of these sorting functions in one file now as well as the uh, as well as the program to run them okay well that's going to do it for today as always i'm nick from coffee before arch and hope you have a nice day